Daniel Fresh Greens being kind enough to share this morning. So welcome to to each one. <clears throat> Title for the message is To What Are You Looking Forward? <clears throat> Could say what's important this morning to you. <clears throat> what is the end goal? Or what is a goal that we're striving for? <clears throat> is it material possession? They will perish. You can't take them with you when you die. Is it relationships? Hopefully with God. But if we're looking for relationships, separation is inevitable. <clears throat> Is it fame and achievement? It's only temporal satisfaction. <clears throat> and in reality, our goals will either set us free or tie us down. <clears throat> and you could say, in, in, uh, even if we set a goal that will set us free, it will. Freedom to serve God will still, you know, if we continue in that freedom, we're still tied to serving him because we want to, so we're not, um, what would you say, we're not forced to do it. <clears throat> Turn to Philippians 2. Are we free to think as we, as we want, or are we free to think as we should? <clears throat> Philippians 2 verse 1 it says if there be therefore any consolation in Christ if any comfort of love if any fellowship of the spirit if any bowels and mercies fulfill you my joy that ye be like minded having the same love being of one accord of one mind <clears throat> let nothing be done through strife or vain glory but in lowliness of mind let each esteem the other better than themselves look not every man to his own thing but every man also on the things of others let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's, that's our, should be our goal, what we're, to what we're looking forward to, is to have that mind of Christ in us, to have it continue working on perfection. <clears throat> it says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Sometimes we think our our manhood is quite great. <clears throat> but it, here it insinuates that he, Jesus, being in the form of God, he didn't make any himself of any reputation, but he took the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. Say so he was he downgraded down to our level, our likeness. <clears throat> he gave us an example. <clears throat> and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. For God <clears throat> also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. <clears throat> Our thoughts show what we are. No, all of us are, we are action readers. We can't, I can't read your mind. I can only read your actions. See your actions in and by your actions, I, I think I can uh, see what you're thinking. But you know that it isn't even always accurate. <clears throat> if we could read minds of others, we would know how to best deal with them. <clears throat> but we don't have that ability. We only know what they think by how they externalize their thoughts and words and actions. And yet, like I just said, <clears throat> that doesn't always 
always uh, show forth accurately because to a certain extent sometimes we can hide our thoughts and not act upon our, our thoughts. <coughs> but <coughs> thought that I read it says life is life becomes torturous to a person who acts contrary to his belief if I am living a double life if I am not truly living for God and yet I'm acting trying to act like I am it makes me miserable James says, <clears throat> unstable. He calls such a one unstable. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Um, there's also a verse I just... talks about miserable. I can't quite get it. <clears throat> but if we allow God to control our minds, <clears throat> if that is... what we're looking forward to, what we're striving for. You know, <clears throat> we are all sinners saved by grace. We are all, we have nothing to lift ourselves up over anyone else. But it's, <clears throat> it's as we strive to follow Christ, as we believe in Christ, it purifies our heart. But it also changes our thoughts. And then we can think as we want, because then we want to think what Christ wants us to think. <clears throat> Second Timothy 1.7, it says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. <clears throat> And Paul tells the Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Be in you. It, let it be a, a, have a place of permanent dwelling. Not just a um, coming and going, but let it be in you. Let it dwell in you. <clears throat> like I said, <clears throat> we can determine who or what is controlling our thoughts. The greatest possession in life is not money or other worldly goods, but the freedom to think as we please, and that will not free us unless we have the mind of Christ. Only as we have the mind of Christ does it does it free us as we think as Christ did. <clears throat> you know, when we look forward to something, we we have an expectation. And if our the ultimate expectation is looking forward to being in heaven with with God sometime and material possessions can't can't give us that fame and achievement can't give us that it's only following um, following God <clears throat> Setting a goal that is, and I, you know, <clears throat> it 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 made me think of Saul's goals that he set. In uh, if we go on in Philippians three, <clears throat> verse four, it says, "Though I might have the confident, though I might also have the confidence in the flesh, if any man think that." Thinketh that he hath, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, 
of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews is touching the law of Pharisee concerning zeal persecuting the church touching the righteousness which is in the law blameless but what things were gained to me I count loss for Christ yea doubtless and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ you know he was on fire <clears throat> in doing what he thought was right and God turned his life around and showed him that what he was doing was was wrong and he was working against God and he he turned around and with that zeal even greater zeal he worshiped and served God <clears throat> even you know, if we can imagine, here he wanted to, do, all of a sudden he wanted to join with the people that he was had been persecuting and they didn't want to accept him because they didn't, they didn't trust him. <clears throat> but <clears throat> it took time. And you know, we can, um, probably often takes time for us either, too. If we, if we take a wrong path in our life, it takes time to build trust. <clears throat> Verse 9, it says, And being found in him, not having mine own righteousness. Say, before he was on his own righteousness, Saul was was um, trying to get to the top of being of building fame and achievements. He did. <clears throat> He went to the furthest extent. He was seeking approval of man. He was, he had spent a lot of time, I believe, in knowing the law and maybe even knew more than some of those that, that were over him he was diligent in doing what he he thought was right <clears throat> he asked for permission to go do we ask for are we is our zeal such as we are looking for opportunities or do we barely recognize them when they are right in front of us <clears throat> And I believe after his conversion, he had the same zeal. He looked for opportunities. And that's why God <clears throat> brought him, brought that light to shine down there and blinded his eyes. And he had to go search for a man to, to, uh, that he can see again. And that search continued on through his life. Those people that he was trying to impress, that he was trying to um, have them look up to him, all of a sudden, he didn't want to identify with them anymore. That was all <clears throat> the satisfaction all disappeared. <clears throat> and yet he studying he was still he, he could say he had to start over his studies in what did God want of him what what was the message that God had for him <clears throat> he was diligent and God didn't back from revealing it to him 
You know, <clears throat> what is my diligence? What is your diligence in knowing what God has, wants me to do, what God wants you to do? Am I satisfied where I am? <clears throat> Jesus was... <clears throat> Say, he was willing, he was ready to come down and to lay down his life. To be born as a baby and to lay down his life on the cross for us. <clears throat> he was willing to, to suffer. You know, what, what am I willing to go through to uh, have that relationship with Jesus do I think it's it's at the ultimate and I'm satisfied with where I am? <clears throat> Verse 9, it says, Not ha being found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which through the faith of Christ, the righteous which is of God by faith, in verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. After Saul's conversion, when he became Paul, he was, didn't matter what he had to suffer, he was willing to, um, he wanted to know more. <clears throat> Before his conversion, he desired authority and power, and he asked for it, and it was granted to him <clears throat> from, the, from men. After his conversion, he had the authority and power from God, and he, and he taught. <clears throat> Verse 12 in Philippians 3, it says, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Jesus, Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which, were be which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. If he, if if Saul wouldn't have Paul, being Paul wouldn't have faced forward look at all the things that he did before, but he he acknowledged his mistakes and he pressed forward and and uh, and he kept reaching for the new goals that that were before him. <clears throat> he received um, Jesus as his Lord. <clears throat> John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. <clears throat> he, uh, you know, it was before uh, his Old Testament, and yet in the Old Testament setting, and yet, you know, there he was, he was preaching, and the people, you know, um, I don't know, to, to me it seems like a, well, it was, yeah, it was a new gospel, and today there's, um, we don't, well, most, we take it for granted so easy because we've, that's all we've ever known. <clears throat>
what are we to what are we looking forward is it <coughs> do we do we feel it's something um, I guess it that we've had it and we think we'll always have it we take it for granted we think we can um, we'll have time and <coughs> sometimes we we ha we get our or I get my goals mixed up and and you know and strive looking forward to to the wrong things and you know maybe I have some uh, material goal that I want to reach. <clears throat> the challenge <clears throat> that we, you know, uh, we can, I can say the right words, I can, I can uh, perform the right actions, I can, but unless it's uh, consistent, people will, people will see, still be able to see, unless it's something from my heart, people will still be able to see that it's not, it's not what it should be, and <clears throat> how how are my what are my characteristics how do how do unbelievers what do they see in my life or even fellow believers what do they see in my life how do I respond to things <clears throat> that I'm faced with Do I have, am I, is, are my actions marked by Christ? Am I living the way Christ did? Am I following the example that he gave? <clears throat> if I, can I identify with, um, Colossians 3. <clears throat> Colossians 3, verse 1, it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Am I seeking those things above, or am I looking at, at the things below? It says, Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. <clears throat> verse 2, it says, To set our affections above, not on earth. Where are my affections? Can I identify with, with verse 3? It says, for you are dead, your life is hid with Christ in God. <clears throat> you know, it's just... <clears throat> um, it's an everyday thing in my, in our life, all of us, I believe, how, you know, we, I, we all, we all rub shoulders with people. Um, maybe we all, maybe for some of us, we rub shoulders with the same people every day. <clears throat> some of us, maybe we rub shoulders with different people every day. What do they say about us? What is their, what is their testimony about us? <clears throat> Do they see a difference how we relate to each other and how we relate to, to, you could say, others outside of church? <clears throat> is our life such that is has a drawing effect on on people that they want to <coughs> that they de <coughs> desire what what we have that they see I'm looking forward to something that I have a goal set 
<coughs> that they <coughs> desire to know more about it. Colossians 3, verse 12, it says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. <clears throat> if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. <clears throat> Makes me think of the Lord's Prayer. It says, you know, if, if we don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will our Father, which is in heaven, forgive us our trespasses. <clears throat> <clears throat> Does love guide our life? <clears throat> Verse 14, above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Does the peace of Christ rule in our heart? Verse 15, let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. <clears throat> Thinking of thankfulness, I think a couple weeks ago, I just had a message on thankfulness for, um, I think it was maybe the military or um, whatever it was. But anyway, this Thursday we had Thanksgiving Day. <clears throat> now it's past, right? Now we can go another year. Are we thankful this morning? Are we thankful every day? I believe as a Christian we should be thankful every day. We should. We have. We have a lot to be thankful for. <clears throat> even at even at times when we we face a misfortune or something, and it and uh, maybe we have to think a little bit. But you know, we can always find something to be thankful for. <clears throat> Right now, you know, <clears throat> we have the Word of God freely. We can read it whenever we want to. We have, most of us probably have two or three Bibles individually. What if there was only one Bible that we securely kept hidden and all of us from church would have to you know, if we weren't sure about a certain scripture, we'd have to ask for that one Bible. <clears throat> it makes me think of all the Bibles that have been distributed in Iraq, the uh, MP3 Bibles, and people, they want the, those that they can carry with them at all times and listen to them and what about you and me? I don't know if, if you do or not, but I have several Bibles on my, different Bibles on my phone. How often do I look at that? <clears throat> it's there. I have the opportunity. How often do I use it throughout the day when I'm, you know, I'm not carrying my Bible with me? Um. You know, we have so many things that we take for granted. And we set goals. We're looking forward to something. Is our ultimate goal? What is our ultimate goal? What is what is it? To what are we looking forward? <clears throat> We're 16 and... <clears throat> Colossians, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. <clears throat> How richly does that word of God dwell in me? 
How richly does it dwell in you? It says, teaching and admonishing one another. You know, it's challenging to me. Is it as easy for me to um, participate in a, in a conversation around the Word of God as it is in some other natural um, work-related thing? Not to, not to pick on anyone, but I'm sure <clears throat> Titus spends a lot of time representing his window. When he goes out to measure the job, and he represents his window, and he, um, I don't think he has to open a brochure to see what this window, how this window, um, what are the good points. And, <clears throat> but he knows, he knows that window all the way through. <clears throat> and yet there's, it's not the only window that's manufactured. There's many windows and he, you know, some of those others, he probably knows something about them. Um, we have the Bible. How do we know the Bible as good as whatever it might be? North American white tail. Um, it could be, you know, different books, authors that people like to read about. Can we tell the story, stories out of the Bible as good as, as that? <clears throat> it's all in what what is important to us <clears throat> How we um, we face struggles, how do we deal with them? In Romans <clears throat> Romans eight um, I'm going to start reading in verse one. Romans 8, verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. It says, The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And <clears throat> for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemned flesh, sin in the flesh. Here, <clears throat> we see that um, Christ, this, uh, having, having the law of Christ <clears throat> in us sets us free from the law of sin and death. We follow God. We follow what the commands of God, it, it sets us free it, um, from the powers of Satan and sin and death. <clears throat> Verse 3, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, for sin condemned sin in the flesh. <clears throat> um, down Verse 9, it says, <clears throat> You're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if, ye, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. It just, it doesn't, 
it doesn't leave any question there. It doesn't say that he's probably none of his. It says he is none of his. If we don't have that, that spirit of Christ in us, <clears throat> spirit of God dwelling in, it, in, in us, And then it, in verse 10 it says, If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. I'd say it, it brings forth the actions. The actions that come forth will show that whose we, who's we are, where we belong, what are, to what we're looking forward to. It will, it will show uh, the direction that we, that we go. <coughs> But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. It says, if we are debtors <clears throat> not to the flesh, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. Yet through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. <clears throat> The last verse here is, is what I wanted. <clears throat> um, you know, these verses prior to it, it talks of, of uh, what we should do, and it shows whose we are. But the last verse, it says, if, um, well, verse 16, the Spirit itself therefore beareth witness to our spirit that we are the children of God. And... If children, then heirs, heirs with God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Is that to what we are looking forward to, to what we are looking forward to be heirs of God, joint heirs with, with Christ? <clears throat> what are the goals that I set? <clears throat> in a... In conclusion, I read a quote that I, I, uh, I thought it, it uh, had a good point that this, this man, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, he was a famous marathon runner. <clears throat> he told a group of boys that his favorite trick of long distance runners was to get the Competing runner to break his pace. He said, "Whenever I never won a race until I had learned how to set my own pace and keep it. And then there was another man that was also competitive in, in sports, and he said that his secret to success was that he never tried to beat was that he never tried to beat his opponent. He set a goal for himself, and it was that goal he worked for no matter how good or how poor his opponent might be. <clears throat> you know, if those two things of the marathon runner, he liked to um, break the pace of his com competitors so he could, so they would lose what their goal was. And it's, he said, I never won a race until I learned how to set my own pace and to keep, keep to it. And isn't that true for us? Unless we set a goal and know how to stick to it, then we probably won't reach that goal. And if we, um, the other one, he didn't change his goal on how, no matter how good or how poor his opponents were. We don't make it, I guess the thought that I got in that is, we don't make it to heaven by being better than those around us. By by walking closer to what we're just a, doing a little bit more than what those around us. If we're still not doing what God 
everything that God requires, we won't make it. <clears throat> so as we think of what we're looking forward to is the end goal of reaching heaven, and so we need to set goals that will get us there. Let's kneel for prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you for this day. Help us as we go through our life that we are not satisfi satisfied with anything except fully doing your will and following what you have us to do. Be with us as we go through our life. Give us strength and courage. Help us to be an encouragement to each other. Help us to reach out to those in need around us that we can know that our goal is to all reach heaven and be with you someday and that we can reach out and help each other along the way. Give us wisdom, direction, guidance as we face decisions, as we go through life. Let your name be glorified. Just be with us as we go from here. All to your honor, glory, in Christ's name we pray, amen. <clears throat> I'd like to open it up for testimony, correction, whatever the Lord would lay on your heart. <clears throat>